<laughs> Hi folks, this is uh, Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. We're just going to think for a short time on how to overcome depression. Um, what I'm about to share with you is from the Westminster Chapel School of Theology study notes from autumn term 1995 lesson 8 from by R.T. Kendall. Uh, and I'm not going to read all the notes out, but I, I will just read one or two quotes and then give you my thoughts on what's being said. Um, so let's come before the Lord, and I just hope that these thoughts will be a help and an encouragement to you. Father, we thank you for this day, and we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor today, and we thank you for your love. And we just give you the prayers and the glory today. And Father, I just pray what I share in this uh, video, I pray that it would help people in their depression. And uh, I pray as I share about my own experiences that uh, it would be a help and a blessing to people in your name and for your glory. Amen. Okay. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 6 it says if we are distressed it is for your comfort and salvation if we are comforted it is for your comfort which produces in you patience and endurance of the same suffering we suffer some of the questions that we could be asking is why does God allow depression what are the reasons for depression is it because of sin is it because of a lack of meaning in life. The Oxford Dictionary defines uh, depression as excessive sadness or hopelessness often with physical symptoms. Depression can come in a variety of forms generally as a sense of worthlessness, a sense of low self-esteem, uh, a lowness of just general spirits with a sense of worry. This depression can bring pessimism about the future. It can bring a sense of vulnerableness. It can bring a sense of frustration. It can bring a sense of failure and inadequacy and a feeling of not being loved. All these things come down to um, a, dis a, a general kind of image of oneself, which is negative. People who can suffer from depression often have feelings of guilt. It can be a constant worrying um, over issues that have been done in the past and unable to move those guilts of the past. question why is this subject important the answer to that is many Christians today do get depressed some questions should be should we go to a psychiatrist if we get depressed should Christians go to non-Christians if they get depressed for counseling what are the answers to these questions? What does the Bible teach about depression? So basically what I'm doing is I'm just going through the notes and picking out points that I see and then I'm, uh, from time to time I will read quotes. Um, there are a variety of, of, of um, depressions says R.T. Kendall there's the emotional depression the quote this is from him neurotic depression a nervous condition that produces symptoms for which there is no evidence of disease for example anxiety reaction varying degrees of death dread worry and apprehension anxiety is often a common denominator of psychopathology disorders hypochondria 
This is characterized as Kendall with a preoccupation with one's health without accompanying, accompanying organic pathology. Next is the psychotic depression, a mental state in which one is detached from reality. Except, example, manic depressive reaction, characterized by moods of elation and depression, which may last from a few days to many months. Melancholia, characterized by a hopeless outlook, often by the fear of having committed an unpardonable sin. Postpartum depression, extreme depression connecting with childbirth, which may occur at any time during pregnancy and throughout the first year following the birth of a child. End of quote. That was Kendall's work, um, so I don't want to take my credit is due. This is Kendall's thinking. Um, there's also spiritual depression, so if you turn to Psalm 13 verse 1, Psalm 13 verse 1, Uh, Psalm 13, verse 1. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? So the, the person's obviously quite struggling there. In, in uh, depression, there can be... Um, uh, there can be a sense of uh, spiritual depression could be because God is dealing with chastising us my son do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son Hebrews 12 5 6 uh, depression can come through di disobedience um, against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you approve right when you speak and justify when you judge Psalm 51 for 4 um, and if you read uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12 4 you'll see Nathan confronts David's guilt so what causes uh, depression well it can be a number of things. It can be physical, uh, not getting enough sleep. It could be hormonal change, such as menopausal or chemical imbalance within the body. Quote, this is um, a quote, glandular dysfunction, the doctrine gland, uh, the enduric, end Endocrine glands produce hormones which affect both physiological and psychological development and function of a person. Adverse effects come from over or under secretion of hormones. Um, another cause for depression is emotional. Um, things that happen to us when we're, ch when we're children. Um, you can be 40 years old but yet have the maturity of a, of a child because you had a trauma when you were younger and you've not got over it. For example, child abuse or verbal abuse from a emotional growth. Dr. Glenn Naramo says every person is worth understanding. So what that means is that in your depression there are things to understand about you and so if someone's trying to help you they need to listen to your story and understand where you're coming from and that means that we must try to be sympathetic to people who are struggling with depression to say to someone just pull yourself together it is cruel we need to really try and understand where that person's coming from In the issue of spiritual depression, uh, the way to deal with it, it, there are three general principles. One, so John three three. 
So we need to know whether we truly know the Lord. So John 3.3 3 reads, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we need to know whether we're born again. Are you born again? The way to know that is, do you trust Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? Then if you look at 1 John 1 7, 1 John 1 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So we need to walk in the light. And then we need to understand how God is working in our lives. So if you turn to Isaiah 45:15. It says, Verily thou art God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel the Saviour. So God is hiding himself there. But that's one way that God works with people. There are other ways too. So we need to know how God works, what he's doing. So how do we deal with depression? Well, we have to ask, what's the cause? If we have a depression, we need to know what the cause is. There might be uh, a combination of spiritual issues and physical issues. Maybe it's an emotional issue, maybe it's a physical issue. Uh, a physical examination will not do you any harm. So, you know, seeing your doctor is a very good place to begin. Um, a, not all doctors, but a very a good doctor can be a help. I, I remember uh, some years ago. Um, having um, a breakdown and my doctor was such a help to me uh, he really really helped me um, he, he, he was so understanding and he gave me uh, the right medication I, I, I was on medication for about two years uh, and that medication was a lifesaver it really really helped me uh, and it really stabilized me and it really gave me utility in a time where I had a complete and utter breakdown. So I would recommend always to go and see your doctor if you feel you need to. That has to be the first place you need to go to. And to work out whether your depression is a physical thing and your doctor can help you to determine that. Um, And then um, as to see, excuse me, as to seeing a Christian counselor and a psychiatrist. Well, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, proficiently qualified to state whether you should or should not there. Um, uh, in counselling. I, I have a degree in pastoral care with, where I have done courses in counselling. I have qualifications in counselling but I'm not an expert. Um, what I would suggest you do, if, you're, if you feel, think your depression is physical then see your doctor. If you think your depression is spiritual then see your pastor. And your pastor will should have the pastoral skills to be able to counsel you and to work through your depression if it's a spiritual depression. So I would say go to your pastor first and to ask it, to see him and make sure that your pastor is a good pastor. A pastor will be good if they care for the flock, love the flock, teach the word of God. And support from your pastor and from your local church. I do think that a lot of 
depression can be helped by community, by individual, uh, by groups of people who can support you and encourage you. So I would seek counseling from your pastor and I would encourage you to be part of a community that will support you. As to what you should do about psychiatry or about seeing a professional counsellor, um, that's up to you. Um, I'm not saying that counsellors can't be used and I'm not saying that psychiatrists can't be used but it's in my own experience that the best person is your doctor and your pastor. Your doctor for the physical and your pastor for the spiritual. Um, R.T. Kendall recommends a good Christian counsellor should be sought and he says this about psychiatry. Most psychiatrists do little counselling partly because of time, rush the patient through by prescribing medicine, are biased against Christians. On the other hand, a psychiatrist can often help deeply disturbed people and can be of benefit as much as non-Christian doctor can practice medicine generally. So, So that's his um, understanding of psychiatry there. Uh, I've, I've, I have a limited experience in psychiatry, but I've advocate for someone who had psychiatric problems, or people claimed that this person had psychiatric problems, and I was involved in being the advocate. That was I had to go and attend um, psychiatric sessions of um, assessment with this person, and I stood up for this person's rights. Um, and my experience is that psychiatry. Uh, is not the best place to go uh, if you're struggling with depression. That's just my personal opinion, but I'm, I'm not a professional, so I'm just giving you a, a, as an opinion. Uh, I'm bored or the, act upon that, but I'm just saying that's my own feeling, that's my own experience, that doesn't seem to be an environment within the hospital, hospital and psychiatrist that can, can that could be really helpful to you. I think the best place to go is your doctor and then to your pastor if it's spiritual. Your pastor, if it's physical, your doctor. Those that's what I think. Um if you spirit if it's spiritual, then there are some things that you can do to help you. Um spend time with God. Psalm 119.11 Psalm 119 Psalm 119 verse 11 Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So you can do things like read the word, prayer, that will encourage you even though you find it hard. Mark chapter 135. And he healed many and was sick of divers diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they, they knew him. Sorry. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed. So the Lord spent time in prayer. 
and when you're depressed spiritually it's very hard to do anything but we need to try and spend time with God in prayer uh, Galatians 5.22 Galatians 5:22 But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness and faith. So depend on the Holy Spirit to help you. I know it's going to be hard. I know you're in dark thoughts. But the Holy Spirit will help you. Yeah? In other words, if you're in prayer, if you're in the Bible, you develop and that will help you. So try and get intimacy with God. Try and spend time with God. Next, dealing with your self-esteem. You know, don't allow things to pull you down. John 5:44. John 5:44 How can you believe which received honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only If you're feeling of low self-esteem try and think about God and his glory and his honor rather than yourself 1 Corinthians 13:5 If you've made a mistake then read 1 Corinthians 13 5 doth not behave itself unseemly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked thinketh no evil if you read uh, 1 Corinthians 13 tell, teaches what love is God doesn't remember your sins when you confess them so stop dwelling on them Psalm 103 verse 12 stop dwelling on the past stop dwelling on the negatives stop dwelling on your failure because that's what's bringing the depression 1 3 verse 12 as for the east is as far as the east is from the west so far it has been removed our trans Ephesians 4, third, chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption, that all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgive one another even as God for Christ's sake have forgiven you so God has forgiven you and you need to forgive other people so don't keep a record of the wrongs when God has forgotten don't be critical of other people If we think of positive things in God, then we'll know better. We'll know think God's blessing. We need to forget about the past. Philippians three thirteen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do: forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. If you made mistakes in the past, forget about them. Move on move on don't let them pull you back don't let the uh, thoughts pull you back keep your eyes on Jesus Hebrews 12 2 stop listening to the negativity stop dwelling on the negativity of the past the present or the future but dwell on Christ dwell on Christ yes I said dwell on Christ Hebrews 12 2 
looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Keep your eye fixed on Christ. Know that your sins are forgiven. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. And God forgives you. Let's turn to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou might be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sin and blot out all my iniquity. O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from the presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy spirit, free spirit. Then will I teach transgressions transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee deliver me from blood guiltlessness O God from the God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness O Lord open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise for thou despisest not sacrifice else would I give it thou delightest not in burnt offering the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of right and the whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. But he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. God will forgive you and, and comfort you as you look to him. Can Christians be depressed? Job and Jeremiah were, were depressed. Job 3.1 and Jeremiah 20.14. Many Psalms reflect people being depressed. But they found help in that 1 Samuel 30 verse 6. But David found strength in the Lord his God, encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He trusted in God, trust in the Lord and do good, Psalm 37, 3. So, depression is a terrible thing. And I think we need to be patient with people who get depressed. Try and find out your warning signs, the things, try and work out what your warning signs are. If you know someone who gets depressed, the best thing you can do is be aware of the times that they are getting depressed and just be gentle and kind and patient with them. And just remember that the body, the human mind, is a very sensitive machine and it needs tender care. So be tender to people and um, when you see people in depression. And if you're in depressed, if you are depressed, try and seek help wherever you can. And don't suffer on your own, okay? I'll just read a few verses that I found to help today. Okay. 
Jesus says, Don't be troubled. You trust God, now trust in me. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't like the peace the world gives. So don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, 1 and 27. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 28. The Lord says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, you and mine. Isaiah 43, 1. I, yes, I alone am the one who blots out your sins for my own sake. And again, Isaiah 42, 25. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Isaiah 41, 10. So I hope this has just been a help to you, uh, just to help you think about depression and maybe how to go forward um, and like I said don't suffer in silence if you want to talk to me about your depression uh, ring me on my Skype which is jason.burns107 and I'm willing to listen to your problems and to walk with you if you want me to so that's jason.burns107 no capital letters okay let's close in prayer Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your grace and your care and your blessings. Father, I pray for all those who suffer with depression today when they hear these would be healing and comfort and strength. And so, God, I pray that you bless this video for your glory to their hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope that was a blessing to you and God bless.